This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show are the 3P PRX Special Edition or SE pedal set by HPP Simulation. The HPP PRX pedals are a standalone, very high-end set of pedals specifically built for sim racing. The HPP PRX pedals go for $1,395 and are hand-built in the USA. One of the main features of the HPP PRX pedal set is the adjustable hydraulic braking system that is much like what you would find in a real car and one of only a handful of pedal sets in the entire world for sim racing that uses a hydraulic pedal set. In addition, it is a three pedal set with a gas, a brake, and a clutch pedal, and the entire pedal set is made of metal, mostly aluminum, and is built for heavy duty sim racing usage. HPP Simulation also makes a two pedal set that goes for a significantly lower price of $795. In addition to that, they also make the 3PX or the 3P PRX in a three pedal basic set that goes for $1195. But today we are testing the fully loaded, comes with all the extras, all the goodies for $1395, the 3P PRX Special Edition model. At $1395, you're talking about a very serious set of pedals. Obviously, these are built for very high-end simulators and the extreme hardcore sim racers only. But there are a few things that make these pedals very special and far from the normal sim racing gear. Now, HPP Simulation, when they first started with this pedal set, they started from a blank piece of paper. They designed a set of pedals specifically built for sim racing that were built for the kind of abuse, the rigors, the demands that we sim racers want from our equipment and components. They also wanted it to be a compact design and look the part of a high-end pedal set. And from the looks of things, they've done a pretty good job of doing exactly that, a great looking pedal set. Now with this design, they also wanted it to be modular, meaning that you can put it together as this entire kit and mount it to your rig or any and all of the pedals can be mounted independently. The HPP 3P PRX SE pedals use a Leo Bonner board for computer connection, and that means they are plug and play and require no additional drivers. When looking at the website, you'll notice they do sell the 3P PRX and the 3P PRX SE or special edition as I like to call it. And there is about a $250 difference in price. Now looking at the 3P PRX, it is basically the same core element, the essence, the functional part, the main part of the pedal set is the same. But with the SE model, you do get some extras thrown in right out of the box. Like it comes with the heel plate, the extra long throttle pedal, the wider brake face, and on top of that, it comes with a full tuning kit to make adjustments to the pedal set. Let's go ahead and take a look at the 3P PRX SE pedals, take a look at some of their functions, their features, then we're gonna get down to insulation, and of course, the most important and most fun part of the review, that being getting out on track and doing some driving. Now, the 3P PRX SE pedals come out of the box fully assembled for the most part. There are still tons of adjustments that can be made, but the main pedal set is fully assembled. And I have to tell you, as soon as you get them on the table, your first look, that first impression, they are so shiny, they are so beautiful, they are so wonderful to look at. It is an artfully crafted three pedal set and your eyes are immediately drawn to the elegant machine pedal arms with their curved holes and a nice contrast of black and silver. Upon closer inspection, we can see how this complicated pedal set goes together. Starting on the bottom, you have four alignment bars that keep three separate pedals together. These bars also allow for adjustment and distance between the pedals and are made of steel. From there are the feet or base of each pedal arm that the alignment bars go through. Each base is the same and is an elegantly shaped piece of aluminum in black. At the front and back side of the base is a mounting hole to secure it to your rig. Towards the front side is where each pedal arm is connected to the base via a large diameter metal bar to pivot on. The pedal arms are also made of aluminum and are also common to all three pedals. They are a piece of machined aluminum with a very cool combination of style and strength designed into one piece. You can see how the shape of the holes and metal add rigidity to the arms and then also elegantly switch to a spine at the center back to create the mounting spot for the arm that extends to the measuring device. The combination of black anodizing and polished aluminum create a beautiful contrast of colors and reek of high-end metalwork. And on top of each pedal arm is a machined aluminum curved pedal face covered in a grip tape friction surface for your foot. 
With the SE edition of the pedals, the pedal faces are actually different for each pedal. The gas pedal having a much longer face than the other two, and the brake pedal face being the widest of the three pedals. And from there, things get a bit more complicated in the best of ways. Each pedal operates and functions in an entirely different way, and with that, each pedal has its own set of adjustments unique to that pedal as well, and of course, they all look different. Starting off with the gas pedal and coming off the pedal arm is an adjustable rod that will change the starting position of the pedal arm. This then extends to the measure part of the throttle pedal, and at its heart is a very unique and downright fun to watch design. In 99 out of 100 pedals that I've tested, no matter how nice or high on the pedal set, they all seem to use a potentiometer for the gas, the clutch, and in some cases, even on the brake pedal. In the case of the HPP 3P PRX SE pedals, they use a linear potentiometer, and it has a very cool slide mechanism that moves back and forth when the pedal is pressed. The potentiometer is then measuring the actual distance of that mechanism when it moves and then there's a spring that provides the resistance. It is a very cool design and not only does it look cool when moving, but it is as smooth and friction free in movements as can possibly be done. The clutch pedal has some similarities to the gas pedal in that the arm is the same along with the tie rod connector, the slide mechanism linear potentiometer and the spring for travel resistance. But the clutch then has a whole other apparatus attached and involved in the pedal's movement. It is a double pinching cam mechanism that provides a three stage feelings to it, including a release point feel modeled after a real life clutch pedal. When the pedal is pressed, the initial resistance is a bit of free travel, followed by the second stage when the clutch plate spring is engaged, and then finally the third stage when you overcome that spring and have the release feeling in the pedal. Like the gas pedal, the clutch pedal and its actions are kind of fun just to watch. Again, a very unique and cool design. And the brake pedal, not to be outdone by the others, is one of the very few actual hydraulic brake pedals that are available to sim racers, and it makes for arguably the most realistic feeling pedal. Once again, deep down, the spine of the brake pedal comes from the same family as the gas and brake, but from the tie rod on, it's another totally unique design. The rod pushes directly into a metal box that then uses hydraulic pressure to initially press against two forms of resistance. First is the double rubber bushing setup that is then squeezed by the converted movement of the pedal via the hydraulic box, much like a master and slave cylinder in a real car. The other form of resistance and hydraulic feeling of the pedal is the pressure transducer that converts the pressure built up in the pedal into an electronic signal going back to the computer. And in true HPP fashion, it is a cool design and fun to watch in action. Also mounted to the brake pedal is the brain, encased in a chrome metal box with a USB plug-in spot facing rearward on the pedals. Also included with the 3P PRX SE is the heel plate assembly. It is a nicely shaped piece of metal with a series of holes pre-drilled into it for different mounting locations. It comes with its own hardware and uses four pieces of nicely shaped and cut aluminum to mount to the front side of the brake pedal's base. The SE edition also comes with a tuning kit that comes in a nice box to keep them stored. Inside the box, you will find a pair of brackets that mount to the pedal face to create a pedal pad stop. This keeps your foot from sliding off the side of the pedal. It also comes with a second set of rubber bushings to adjust the brake pedal pressure. Also included in the box, an assortment of different springs to adjust the pressure or tension of the gas and clutch pedals. This includes a small and larger spring to be able to create dual resistance or a progressive feel to it. There's also an Allen wrench set to work on the pedals and a USB cable for installation. The HP 3P PRX SE pedals are modular, which means you can take it all apart, mount each pedal any way you want, just drill them to your rig and you're done. But if you're gonna mount them as a assembled unit, the overall dimensions are a factor. So let's go ahead and talk about the dimensions. That way you'll know if they're gonna fit into your rig. Starting off with the overall width, they are adjustable, but the way I have them set up to fit on my R seat has the pedal set at about 12 inches or 305 millimeters wide. They do allow for up to about three inches or 76 millimeters wider if desired. Without the heel plate assembly, the pedal set measures in at about 10 and a half inches or 268 millimeters front to back. 
and then with the heel plate installed, they're about 12 inches or 305 millimeters front to back. The pedal height from the deck is the same or identical in all three pedals, and that extends up 10 and a half inches or 268 millimeters from the base that it is mounted to. We can also measure the pedal faces, and with the SE model, each one is slightly different. In width, the clutch and gas are each two inches or 51 millimeters wide, with the brake pedal being wider at two and a half inches or 64 millimeters wide. The clutch and the brake are both four inches or 102 millimeters tall, and the gas pedal is elongated and measures five inches or 127 millimeters long. The pedal faces are all curved in shape and can be mounted in several positions. And then finally are the actual mounting holes. Each pedal has a front and back mounting hole and they are about eight and three quarter inches or 220 millimeters front to back. The width of these mounting holes will be affected by the spacing that you set the pedal width to. The heel plate supplied with the pedals is a thin piece of metal with two bends creating the front lip and the heel stop. It is wide enough for all three pedals and measures about 12 and 3 quarter inches or 324 millimeters wide and then is about 4 inches or 102 millimeters in depth or front to back. So after taking that close up look at the HP 3P PRX SE pedals, you're starting an idea just how nice they are. You can see the quality of the components, just how nice all of the pieces on them are, and you can start to justify that $1,395 price point. You can also see just how tunable, how adjustable they are, and you know they're gonna make just about any SIM driver out there happy, that's for sure. So for me, after taking that closer inspection, I was starting to get excited about getting them on my rig. How are they really going to perform. So when it comes to mounting to the rig, these are really easy to do. Again, they're modular, so eight and three quarters between the two mounting holes, drill two holes, put two bolts in, and you've mounted all three pedals. In my case, I wanted to use them as the complete set, and I wanted to put them onto my new R-Seat S1, and I got really lucky there. The R-Seat magically has three sets of holes at eight and three quarter inches. All I had to do was space these, so it meant loosening up the lower Allen bolts, getting the spacing right on the pedals, tightening the Allen bolts, and then literally just bolting them to my sim rig, and I was up and running. That left only the heel plate to go, and that was rather simple. There are two pieces of aluminum that mount to the base of the brake pedal with two bolts each. This allows for a little up and down angle to the plate. It then has another set of aluminum bars that mount to those pieces with another bolt, and then finally the heel plate itself bolts to those bars with four smaller bolts, and that was about it. Fairly easy. One thing that really separates high-end pedals from the basic pedals are their adjustability. The ability to tune the pedals to exactly how you want them to act and feel under your feet. The 3P PRX SE pedals totally took that into consideration in their design, and they're completely adjustable, and they have adjustments that are specific to each and every pedal. Starting off at the top, or at least what's common with all three pedals, are the pedal faces. The pedal faces can be mounted in different locations. There is a series of threaded holes in the back of the pedal face that allows for up, down, left, and right mounting. When it comes to the spacing of the pedals, and in addition to being able to move the actual pedal faces, you can actually move each pedal entire arm and assembly. Those move on the alignment bars. You just loosen up the screws, move the pedal where you want, lock the screws back down, and that pretty much covers all the spacing issues on the pedals. Next up is the actual angle of the pedal, or the setback where it sits in its resting position. The tie rod length between the pedal arm and the measuring device can be adjusted. Make it longer and the pedal arm sits further forward. Make it shorter and the arm reclines back for its starting position. In the case of the throttle pedal, it has its own adjustments to make you happy. The spring itself can be changed out for a different strength and this will affect the overall pressure needed to move the pedal. You can also use the smaller spring inside a larger spring to create a dual resistance or a progressive feel to its tension. With the SE Edition, you get three additional spring choices to choose from each coming in a different strength or tension. You can also adjust the throw or distance that the pedal moves with an adjustable end stop. With the SE model, we also get a selection of different rubber bumpers to use on the brake pedal. You can use two hard ones, two soft ones, or a combination of each, with each one changing the amount of pressure needed to engage the brake. You can also change the preload on the bumpers, and this will also affect the strength and the point of engagement. 
The clutch pedal is adjustable much like the gas. You can change out the springs to a strength that you want and you can once again use the little spring inside if you're looking for more of a progressive feel. And then also like the gas, you can adjust the stop point or the travel distance of the pedal. And then finally is the heel plate. It can be lifted upwards or lower and then its angle can also be adjusted to put it where you want. Now that I have the HPP pedals mounted to my rig, I have them completely dialed in and tuned, all the angles, all the adjustments, just the way I want them to be, and I'm ready to go. It's time to get these incredible pedals out on track. And one thing that I did mention at the beginning of the review is they are plug and play. All you have to do is plug them into your computer, let Windows recognize them, and get them mapped in your favorite sim, and then it's time to do some driving. And once I was out on track, the first thing that I noticed about these pedals was how good they felt under my feet. They are rigid, the pedals are grippy to my feet, and the spacing ended up perfect. The adjustable heel plate was able to be where I needed it to be, and it keeps my heels at a good angle attack for pressing on the pedals. The next most noticeable thing about these pedals is just how smooth the movement is. Sure, you feel the tension or strength of the spring or the hydraulic pressure, but then beneath that, the silky smooth movement of the parts with no rough or tough spots in their application. And then finally, the next most noticeable thing is the strength of the brake pedal. This thing is a beefy pedal that takes a pretty good amount of pressure to engage. These are not toy pedals. These are super pro, super realistic racing pedals. Overall, I was able to adjust to these pedals in a matter of seconds. With many products, it might take a significant amount of time to feel comfortable. But with the HPP 3P PRX SE pedals, I was driving with confidence in seconds, not days, not hours or minutes. After getting comfortable, I was able to focus on the action of each pedal individually. The gas pedal on the 3P PRX pedals is what really shows off the smoothness of this pedal set. I tried a couple of springs, and with the lighter spring, you almost can't feel the pedal move at all. Move your foot, and the throttle in the car changes. It isn't literally that light, even with the lightest spring, it, but it really does show off how friction-free the movement of these pedals are. You can adjust the throw length of this pedal anywhere from one and a half inches to two and a half inches, and somewhere in that range should make just about everybody comfortable. For me, on a high-end pedal set, I like that longer two and a half inches of throw as it allows me that much more variance in pedal application for smooth corner exit. The clutch pedal has a very distinct feeling to it. It's snappy, it's springy, and very quick in its release point. With its multiple stages of movement or tension, it mimics the release of a pressure plate on a real clutch on a real car very well. For those looking for authenticity out of their pedals, this clutch is one of the most realistic I have ever felt. I did a bit of heel and toe driving on this pedal set, despite that not being my specialty. And for those who it is their specialty, I feel they are looking for ultra realism. And the clutch pedal will bring a smile to those drivers' faces. For me, I use the clutch primarily for race starts or pulling out of the pits. At those moments, I am looking for a very quick release and this clutch pedal does that very well. It is not as variable as the gas pedal, which maintains the same tension throughout its entire stroke or movement. But the clutch pedal, it seems to get stronger until it gets to that release point, and then it releases and it almost feels like it's pulling itself in as your foot goes to the end stop. But it is the brake pedal on the 3P PRX SE pedal set that really has the magic. This hydraulic and rubber bumper setup is again one of my favorite pedal feels that I have ever used. The pressure is very strong, and like the other pedals, it is very smooth. The pressure on the brake pedal feels to build up under your foot the further that you press it. The strength of the pedal being enough to, for the most part, prevent that stabbing the brake lockup feel that we get at times with just a spring for resistance. I find that with this brake pedal, I can almost balance my foot on the spot just prior to lockup and squeeze slightly harder to get even more out of the braking system. I also love the way the hydraulic pedal performs on pedal release as much as when I'm pressing it in. In a real car's braking system, the brake is slow to release, and if you pull your foot away quickly, it will leave the pedal behind. When using a spring or even a load cell pedal, it is usually much quicker on the release and a little less realistic in feeling to me. 
I did find that when I first get in my rig, the first time I press the pedal, I can feel a little sticking of the seals in the brake pedal. It only happens once per session, and it is ever so slight, but it was in there somewhere. With the HPP 3P PRX SCs, you also get an extra set of rubber bumpers for the brake pedal. It comes with the two red or the two softer ones installed from the factory. The extra black ones are even stiffer for those looking for the stiffest brake in town. It will also reduce the travel length and this super resistance to the double black one gives it a very F1 pedal feeling with little travel and a very hard brake pedal. For me, I really enjoyed one of each, giving the pedal a bit of softer travel followed by the progression of the secondary harder rubber. With the pedal being strong and extremely sensitive, when you get dialed in or used to the pedal's movement, you can become very quick to react to braking changes. Just a touch more pressure will be enough to get the maximum, or just the slightest of release when overdoing it. You can balance on the point and literally decrease your braking zones with efficient braking. But it is the trail braking that this pedal seems to really excel at. With the pressure and the sensitivity, it becomes so easy to reduce the braking pressure as we turn in for the corner. Instead of lifting my foot, I just have to think about lifting my foot, and that almost seems to be enough to get the job done well. If you feel the car starting to push from too much front end loading, just think about less pressure and the car regains traction. All in all, the pedal set came through very well and it was a pleasure to drive. With the only negative thing happening while driving was my right heel slipping off the heel plate when resting under braking, but never to the point of distraction or having my foot not at the ready when needed. I also experienced a little bit of dragging brake, but that really was a case of me being lazy and leaving my foot on the brake and the pedals being so precise or so sensitive that any hint of pressure would register at the pedal. This is cured by not placing pressure on your pedal while driving, or you can short calibrate them or add a bit of dead zone depending on your sim. But the more I use these pedals, the more I fell in love with them as well. The constant feeling, the repeatable results, the strength, the smoothness, all of these things gave me total confidence in what my feet were doing while driving. Pedal by pedal or collectively as a set, the HPP 3P PRX SE pedals continue to perform as well as anything I have ever tested. These are serious pro sim racing gear and they are the perfect upgrade for someone looking to build the ultimate sim rig. Normally at this point of the show I would move on to the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, but in the case of the HPP 3P PRX SE pedals, I did have one issue that I wanted to talk about because I didn't feel it was really quite worthy of listing on that list, so I did want to talk about it. But as you can see, the heel plate, the way I have it set up, is resting on my desk flat with the surface like the pedals are mounted. However, if you lift it up and use those adjustable mounts and put it up, I found that it was hard to lock it down to the point where the heel plate stayed up. And I read in forums where people also had that same issue. But it was one of those things I had such an easy solution for that it wasn't an issue. All I had to do was put a piece of metal or piece of wood underneath the heel plate and it resolved that issue. So it wasn't something that I was concerned about. Now, the other concern and something that I also resolved, so again, I'm not gonna list it as an issue, I'm just telling you how I solved the problem, was when I pressed on the brake, it was such tremendous force that it inevitably would lift, flex this heel plate up ever so slightly. And when released, it would hit the R seat and that was a metal on metal contact and it made a little clack noise. Well, all I had to do was put a couple strips of tape down and it solved that problem. No problem whatsoever. Then the last thing is these little screw head, these bolts sticking up on the top. Now, you can see they're right outside where my foot would be. I never touched them with my foot. Even when doing heel toe driving, they were not an issue while driving, but they're kind of an eyesore to me. And it was like, gosh, they're such incredibly beautiful pedals, but then these bolts. But again, functionally, they need to be there. I didn't really want to give it a big hit on that. So I just want to tell you the things that kind of I thought about that weren't necessarily a big condition, but I did want to mention before we moved on to, and now we will move on to the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good, of course. And that is, again, let's get back to it. These are absolutely beautiful, gorgeous, fantastic looking pedals. Super accurate. Brake pedal, so easy to modulate. Each pedal designed to feel like the real thing. Made for pros, commercial sims, or the hardcore. Highly adjustable. Extra springs and bumpers to choose from. 
easy to mount, plug and play, built for abuse, hydraulic pedal, lifelike, clutch release, feels real, super rigid pedal arms, no flex, no wiggle, very smooth operation, curved pedal faces, feel good, fun to watch mechanism. And now on to the not so good, and this is one of those cases I had to really, really get ticky-tack to even put things on the list other than the things I talked about on the heel plate. But let's start things off with the obvious. The one thing that it's hard to get over, but I'm going to talk about it in the final thoughts, and that is that they are very expensive. Touchy calibration. Heel plate could be longer. Slight stick of a seal on the brake, only when first pressed. And that's it. So now on to the bottom line. And like I said, I mean, sometimes I get a product and I find it actually hard to find cons. I find it hard to find flaws. I find it hard to find negative things to say about the product. In the case of the HPP 3P PRX SE pedal set, that was the case. They are just incredibly beautiful, incredibly highly functional, highly tunable pedals. There are so many incredible things, but I did have a few things that I want to talk about as far as the cons or the negative aspects go because we have gloated about them for this entire review. So starting off with the obvious, and it's hard to get over the price at $1,400 or $1,395, they are extremely expensive pedals. And at that price, obviously, they're not for everybody. I get that. That is a valid criticism of the pedal set. But to be perfectly fair, I don't think they're intended for everybody. I mean, if you're out there and you're on a fanatic club sport set of pedals for 300, you have excellent pedals that can do everything that these can do. I mean, ultimately, are they going to make you faster? I'm not 100% sure about that as much as the difference in what you feel and see and that level of appreciation. They're really intended for high-end simulators. They're intended for very wealthy people or companies that are building professional simulators. I don't think they're even intended for the everyday average sim racer. So that's something that I think it's fair. Uh, they're, they're not trying to sell them in massive volume. They're trying to sell them to the connoisseurs of sim racing. So the other thing that you got to take into consideration is the touchy calibration. I mean, as sim racers, we always want faster registering or more highly accurate components, but with that comes, a few flaws or difficulties to go along with that brake pedal that might be so sensitive that you blow on it and it starts to register some brake pressure. So you have to take some other things into consideration. I mentioned short calibrating, the ability to, when I calibrate in iRacing, for example, I will not press the gas pedal to the absolute stop. I'll go to like 98, 99 percent and then I'll release the pedal. That way it leaves like a 1% dead zone. The reason? Because I find if I go to the full end stop that yes, when I go to full end stop, it's enough to be 100%, but them being so sensitive that if I even let up the slightest a bit, it's enough to pull away slightly. The brake pedal almost works the opposite. It's so sensitive that the slightest touching or leaving your foot on the pedal might drag the brake but you can cure that by short calibrating on the pressing side. So I'll press the brake all the way under calibration. And when I'm releasing, I'll hold just like 1% on that pedal when I let go or when I hit the final calibration moment. In other sims, you can just add a dead zone or you could even use something like DI view to totally calibrate it to exactly want and have a dead zone built into it. And that takes us to the final two items on that not so good list, with the first being the heel plate. And I mentioned already, I had some ticky tack things about it that I was able to solve all the problems. You got the bolt heads on top with a little bit of the eyesore, which isn't that big of a deal. And yes, the heel plate could be deeper and that would work better for people with big feet or different angle of drivers, and that would definitely make them that much better. And then the final item really isn't even a con at all, and it doesn't even belong on the list. I just felt compelled to put things on the list, and that's that brake pedal seal. And it's just when you first press it it's just the rubber getting wet again and you don't feel it again until you go away and come back 24 hours later and just press it and feel that sticking of the seal that's all it is so what does that leave us with well quite a lot and in the best of ways the hpp 3p prx SE pedals are amongst my favorite pedals that I've ever tested or used. And that includes the fact that I've driven in things like a quarter million dollar Cruden simulator and these pedals are as good as the pedals that were in that sim. 
And on top of that, they are works of art. Any person like me who loves the design, the shape, the assembly of metal items, you're gonna look at these and they're gonna look like they're sculpted by Michelangelo. And I think that's what made my eyes so drawn to those bolts sticking out. They're so gorgeous, except for those darn bolts. But to a metal guy like me, these are a perfect balance of functional art. And yes, they are beautiful, but they work even better than they look. The HPP 3P PRX SE pedals are built with the high-end user in mind. They are heavy duty and built for years of abuse. They are smooth, fast, and highly accurate to make the most critical equipment connoisseur happy. And they are unique and gorgeous enough to be the highlight of most sim rigs. When I think back to the good, the not so good list, I gotta tell you, these pedals are as close to perfection as anything that I've ever tested here on the show. And I'm totally okay with the fact that they come at a very steep price. I mean, after all, it gives us something to strive for. So it really has been a pleasure to test and review these pedals. I hope you've enjoyed the review and that I've answered all the questions that you might have. And of course, if I didn't, be sure to email me at sean, S-H-A-U-N, at thesimpit.com, and I'll be sure to answer your questions. And if you wanna check them out yourself, you can go to hppsimulation.com, check out these pedals and the other ones that they have available and even order a set. But it will take about one to two weeks because they are handmade in the USA. So you've got to wait for what is great. That's going to do it for this one. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you'll know when we have our next great review coming and that will be coming fairly soon. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.